We are braiding our hair today, and I'm going to demonstrate a couple of different things. I have my hair divided into pigtails because it's not uncommon to have to braid your hair if you're doing more laid back styles of dance or you're doing something that is more country based or themed or you're going for kind of like that girl next door look. It's also not uncommon if you're also doing dances that are more heavily representing European culture. And so braids are just something that you also need to know. French braiding can be a challenge though. So when we talk about French braids, there are your standard French braid, which I will demonstrate on one side, but then there's the inverted French braid or as some refer to it as the Dutch braid and it goes by some other name so it does kind of depend on who you talk to, where you're at, all that fun stuff. But I will demonstrate that as well. Now when it comes down to French braiding, oftentimes we wish that we were more like an octopus and had many extra arms. Now you can also just use your hand and kind of guide the hair into each of the braids. But if you're doing this for a show, you want it to look nice. So you sometimes need to clean up that appearance so it looks more even. The more experience you get with braiding, the less you'll have to do any of this stuff. I wanted to be able to demonstrate this though because I know that this is an area that some dancers have a challenge with. It's not always easy to just be able to French braid any kind of style into your hair. So. We're going to start off though with just a standard braid. If we divide our hair into three parts, you want them nice and even, and you just fold towards the center from the outside. You can do this the other way around. I prefer it this way because it's a lot easier on my wrists. <laughs> Now when my braid gets this small, I will oftentimes use a rubber band. For today, however, I am just using a standard ponytail. Mainly because I'm taking it in and out so many times that I did not want to be biting a rubber band back and forth. For show though, I use clear bands so that way it blends into my hair and it's nice and concealed. So this is a little bit bulkier than normal. <laughs> but that is just your standard braid. From there, you can twist this around, you can cross it over, you have a whole lot of options. And things like this is not uncommon for if you're doing, again, more European type dances. It's German culture, for example. It's not uncommon to French braid all the way around the head or take braids like this and do a circle around the head or do a headband of braids. So just a standard braid comes in handy. The longer your hair, the easier it'll be to work with. I'm going to use this as an example on purpose. <laughs> if you have stragglers with any kind of French braid, you can go over, usually, sometimes you may just have to control all delete that, um, but you can oftentimes just go over some of those bumps and pop them in. So you'll be able to grab that chunk of hair and feed that down and into the braid to tuck it in because the audience won't be able to see that. And you can correct then whatever bubbles you may have had in the braid. I mention this because those with layered hair will oftentimes find that like some of those top layers 
don't always like to sit nicely into a French braid. <laughs> the Dutch braid sits on top. This is also known as the inverted French braid or whatever other name it goes by. The braid is seen on the top of the head as it goes down. And it basically just means you're pulling the hair in from the opposite direction. And again, how tight or how wide, how much you're pulling in the hair will impact what your braid looks like. And so you have to take some of that into consideration when you're braiding your hair. Same thing too for if you have layers, you have to kind of know your hair and know how to get it into the mix. So to demonstrate what you would be doing for the Dutch braid then, you again divide your hair into thirds, but instead of crossing over like we did for the original French braid, we are going to cross under. And that allows the braid to then sit on top. And you still add in hair as you go. So as you go, you keep gradually pulling it up and under. Then eventually you start to see the braid forming on top. Just like with the French braid, if there's anything that's sticking out where it doesn't belong, you can tuck it in with more bobby pins to make it lay flat, and even use the bobby pins to make the braid more pronounced. Again, the more practice you get with this, the better it becomes. I wanted to be able to use today to tackle some of the obstacles though that come along with doing the braids. So hopefully this helps you out and over time you get better and better French braids. I will see you tomorrow as we talk about French twist. I will see you then.